Okay. So, good day everyone. I am Maya Mark Johnson A. I am I am member of Group 11. And first, I would like to introduce to you my group mates. So, namely, Mendoza Bianca Gumpad, Ordon Ordonia Earl Jan de Vera, Pagar Jenny Camacho. So the topic that was assigned to us to discuss today is Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, also known as CAA Philippines. Let's go to the his. Let's go to the second second slide. Here in the second slide, we would now talk about the history of CAA Philippines. So, wait. The Legislative Act Number 3909, passed by the Philippines Legislative on November 20, 1931, created an office under the Department of Commerce and Communication to handle aviation matters, particularly to the enforcement of rules and regulations governing commercial aviation as well as private flying. On November 12, 1936, the Philippine Legislative passed Commonwealth Act No. 168. What is Commonwealth Act No. 168? Commonwealth Act No. 168 is also known as Civil Aviation Law of the Philippines, which created the Bureau of Aeronautics. So it means Commonwealth Act No. 168 is uh, responsible in the creation of Bureau of Aeronautics here in our country. <coughs> Excuse me. On October 1947, Executive Order Number no. 94 reorganized the government transfer of Bureau of Aeronautics to the newly created Department of Commerce and Industry and renamed Civil Aeronautics Administration or CAA. In June 20, 1952, the Civil Aeronautics Board and Civil Aeronautics Administration was reorganized. It is under the Republic Act Number no. 7716. So it means in June 20, 1952, under the Republic Act Number no. 7716, the Civil Aeronautics Board and Civil Aeronautics Administration was reorganized. Du during the July 23, 1979, the CAA was renamed the Bureau of Air Transportation under the Executive Order Number no. 546 and placed under the Ministry of Transportation and Communication. Communications, I mean. April 4, 1987, the Bureau of Air Transportation was renamed to Air Transportation Office. So, it is under the Executive Order Number no. 125, headed by the Assistant Secretary of Air Transportation. March 4, 2008, the Air Transportation Office was renamed again into Sevilla Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. So, from Air Transportation Office, uh, it was renamed again to Civil Aviation Authority, Authority of the Philippines under the Republic Act No. 9497. It is headed by the Director General of Civil Aviation. So, Civil Aviation or CAAP here in our country is headed by Director, Director General of Civil Aviation. So, uh, and let's go now to the third, third slide. I would like to introduce to you the CAA of the Philippines. So, what is CAA all about? CAA is an in independent regulatory body with quasi-judicial and quasi-legislative powers that possessing corporate attributes to be known as the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines or CAAP and attached to the, to the Department of Transportation and Communication. DOTC and CAA is headed by Director General of Civil Civil Aviation and the current Director General of Civil Aviation is Captain Jim 
si Sai Jong Ho. So, let's go to the next slide. And here in this next slide, we would see the qualification for you to become a director general or for you to be qualified as director general. They say that no person shall be appointed or designated as the director general unless he is a Filipino citizen, at least 35 years old of age, at least 35 years of age, I mean, good moral character, unquestionable integrity, recognized competence, and, and have a degree holder with at least five years supervisory or management experience in the field of aviation. So let's go to the power and function of CAA. The Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, Philippines is the National Aviation Authority of the Philippines uh, re, that is responsible for implementing policies on civil aviation to assure safe, economic, and efficient air travel. Also, CA, the power and function of CAA Philippines is uh, they are the ag agency who investigate aviation accidents via their aircraft accident investigation and inquiry board. Um, next slide. Here in this slide, we would see the organizational structure of CAA Philippines. Let's go now to their functions. The first one is safety management system staff. They are the one who carry out safety performance, monitor, performance monitoring, performance safety assessment, regularly perform, regularly perform safety auditing and safety promotion. The next one would be air traffic control and the airspace management division. Their function is they are the the one who conduct investigation of aircraft accident or incidents and perform safety monitoring of operation of ATC facilities. Also, they are the one who supervise and manage air traffic control services provided within the, within the Philippine airspace and all controlled airports to ensure safe, orderly, and expeditious conduct of air traffic here in our country. The next would be the function of aeronautical information and communication. Um, they are the one who provide administrative, administrative service and flight information and assistant, assistance service nationwide. They are also the one who ensure the flow of information necessary for the safety, regularity, and efficiency of international air navigation and provide administrative service and flight information and assistant service nationwide. The next one would be planning, evaluation, and personnel division. They are the one who monitor and provide logistical supports for ATS general service requirements, general service requirements, programs training requirements, facility proficiency and career, de career development of ATC personnel. They also provide overall administrative, administrative services, execute administrative policies, rules and regulation, and analyze management problem, and analyze management problem and provide solutions. And the last one would be the Office of Enforcement and Legal Service. This office shall prov provide adequate legal assistance and support to the Director General and to the authority as a whole in the exercise of the quasi-legislative and quasi-judicial power. Uh, the CAA has also a responsibilities. Uh, CAA is the is a multi-role government agency that is responsible for the regulation of aviation in the Philippines. Oh wait, mali. 
they are also responsible in the establish and prescribe regulation for the inspection and registration of aircrafts owned and operated in the Philippines and all air facilities. They are also responsible in establish and prescribe the corresponding rules and regulation for the enforcement of laws governing air transportation. They are also responsible to operate and maintain national airports, air navigation, and other similar facilities. And also, they are also responsible in administer and operate the Civil Aviation Training Center or CATC. Next one, we would now go to the recruitment process. Here in the recruitment process, we have four, uh, we have four element, namely called application. Second one would be examinations nationwide. The third one would be panel interview, and the last one would be physical examinations. Um, if you want to become a, or if you want to be part of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, here is the requirements for you to become part of them. You should be natural born citizen of the Philippines. You should be single, not more than 26 years old as of May 25, 2018, physically, mentally, and psychologically fit has a good moral character with good with good commands of oral and written english with no criminal or administra administrative case has not be this honorable has not be this honorab honorably separated from government or private service bacular baculate 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 degree holder of any course, computer literate with 20 out of 20 vision without correctiveness, lenses, and not colorblind. Here is the qualification requirements for you to become a civil, for you to be part of the civil aviation of the Philippines. The next one would be the documentary requirements. Uh, you uh, duly accomplish application forms, diploma in authenticated copy, birth certificate in photocopy, police clearance in original copy, NBI clearance also in original copy, two pieces of two by two photo should be color, colored picture with white background. Now, let's go to the training. Uh, training is uh, under the CATC, Civil Aviation, Aviation Training Center. Uh, thus, uh, CATC provides on a regional basis. basis the, uh, the, the center provides on a regional basis the advancement training course in the areas of management. Cursing the management. The national curse, courses in the fields of air traffic controls airways communication and air navigation facilities maintenance so they are and they are the one who program to meet the training requirements now let's go to the promotion must must meet with the qualification depending on the position applying to for the first second for the first second and managerial position uh, there there are there are six uh, there are six uh, elements. First would be education and training. That would be 15 points. Experience, that would be 30 points. Performance, that would be 20 points. Physically, physical characteristics and personality, personality traits, that would be 10 points. Potential, that would be 20 points. And the last one would be outstanding accomplishment, that would be 5 points, a total of 100 points. For special skilled and utility worker positions, there are there are there are also six elements. First would be education and training, that would be 15 points. Experience, that would be 30 points. Actual skills assessment and performance for CAAP applicants only, that would be 20 points. And physical physical characteristic and personality traits, that would be 10 points. 
potential that would be 20 points and the last one would be outstanding accomplishment that would be 5 points also a total of 100 points let's go now to the retire retirement when we talk about retirement in the CAA uh, Philippines retirement shall be automatic and compulsory retirement I mean retirement shall be automatic and compulsory compulsory at the age of 65 years of eight years old if he had completed 15 years of service if he has not he shall be allowed in the service until he has have completed 15 years unless he is otherwise eligible for disability of retirement the last one would be i the second to the last one would be benefit Retirement benefit, when we talk about retirement benefit, uh, retirement gra gratuity provided under Republic Act number 1616 as amended plus the refund of retirement premiums payable by the Government Service Insurance System or GSIS without the incentive her in provided. Retirement benefit under Republic Act number six. Six zero or applicable retirement separation or unemployment benefit benefit provided under the Republic Act number eighty two ninety one if qualified. Those with less than three years of government service may opt to avail of the separation grat gratuity under the Republic Act number sixty six fifty six. Let's go now to the disciplinary mechanism. Disciplinary mechanism. Aircraft Accident Investigation and Inquiry Board. They are the one who are reporting of accidents. General authority to investigate. Accident prevention. Investigation of accidents within the military sites. RA number 9497 chapter... Ch chapter... Section... Uh, chapter... 11 at the chapter 11 section 82 um, general penalty any violation of the provision of this act or any order rule or regulation issued there under or any term condition or limitation of any certificate or license issued under this act for which no penalty is expressly provided shall be punished by Fine ranging from 20,000 to 100,000 pesos for each violation. S uh, sec section 83, Penalty Considerations. In determining the amount of any such penalty, the Director General shall take into account the nature, circumstances, extent, and gra uh, gravity of the violation and with the respect to the person found to have committed the violation. The degree of culpability, history, or prior offenses, ability to pay, effect on ability to continue, to do the business, and such other matters as justice may require. That's all, and thank you for listening. Uh, have a good day. Thank you for...